Hey everyone, I was about to fill another loop and I thought it was about time I made a dedicated video just on filling a loop, but not just that, how to set up for it, the precautions, I mean this is something you've seen me do a thousand times in other videos, but it's just kind of random snippets here and there. I want to have just a full library of guides for everything, so... Yeah, I'm setting up with paper towels, first of all. With links you take every precaution that you can. I mean, even just the really obvious stuff that's probably never going to happen, you do it anyway. If you do get a leak and it ends up on your components, it's actually not as bad as you would think, because most coolant, particularly brand new coolant, is non-conductive, same with distilled water. But still, dismantle your components completely and let them dry out for like you know a week or something. If you can blow them out with a with high pressure air, that will also help because the fluid will get stuck in certain places and it won't be able to evaporate from those places. So don't expect all of the fluid to disappear you know straight away. So I would probably put them in a room with the fan on for, you know, a good long period of time. This is a great opportunity to talk about fill and drain ports and a little bit about loop design in those areas. So let's start with the easy one, which is drain ports, which, you know, it's pretty obvious that you need to just put them in the lowest possible position in your build. Now, I'd really like to put them onto pump tops with a pump and rose combo because obviously it's just immediately going to drain the reservoir and then everything else is going to drain back into the reservoir. But you do end up with airlocks and fluids stuck. For example, this 360 millimeter radiator here at the front has the inlet outlet at the top, which means that radiator is going to stay full of coolant and there's just nothing that you can do about it. So drain ports are not really that effective normally. They only, I mean, at worst, if you put them on the pump res combo, they'll drain the res and that's it. But then if you, you can tip the build on its side or upside down or whatever to try to get more coolant out. But yeah, they're never 100% effective in really small and simple loops. You can get them to almost work perfectly and drain, you know, 90% of the fluid. But I, I would say in this build, it will probably drain about 50% of the fluid without tipping the build upside down. But the other thing to consider is that a drain port is not going to work without letting air in somewhere to replace, well, to equalize the pressure. You can't just open your drain port and expect it to drain without letting air in the top. It will drain a little bit, but then all of a sudden it's going to stop and you're going to wonder why. And then you'll let air in the top and it'll come pouring out. So, yeah, always open a top port, a port somewhere up very, very high in the loop, top of the reservoir. And that's going to, you know, equalize the pressure and let all of the fluid drain out. And actually some of the airlocks can be dealt with if you can't get fluid out of another area. If you have another port somewhere, like on your radiator. But make sure it's up really, really high and be careful opening it because obviously there still could be fluid in that part of the loop. But I really don't like tipping builds upside down and turning them on their sides. It's something that I just never ever do. If I want to get all of the fluid out, I, I flush it. So what I'll do is I'll measure how much fluid has come out. I, I'll also measure how much goes in so that I know exactly how much is left behind. Then I will flush the loop by diluting it over and over again with deionized water until all of the color and all of the coolant is out. And then I'll figure out the ratio for the coolant concentrate and I'll replace enough coolant concentrate in the loop to you know for the amount of deionized water which is left behind. A little bit of a complicated process but yeah that's if you want to change the color of your coolant or just change out your coolant. I mean if you're three years down the track and you're doing maintenance well then you really just need to strip down the entire build pull apart the water blocks, dismantle absolutely everything and give it a really good clean out. Or you can use something like the Mayhem Splits cleaning kit, which also works great and will save you from having to 
tear everything down in many cases. Now fill ports are an interesting one. This build over here, you can see that I've added two dedicated fill ports on the top panel which is really going to make things very very easy but take a look at the amount of fittings that it's required and yeah there was no way around this, there's a radiator going up there but there's just so many different things that you can do with fill ports but we have a Singularity Computers Proteum D5 pump and reservoir combo here and one of the many benefits of this combo, oh sorry this is actually the DDC is the amount of options mounting options, inlet outlet options and so what it means is there's plenty of places to put fill ports, drain ports, you know you can see we have this extra port which is actually an inlet on the side of the pump here that we're using for the drain port perfect position for it, easy access, just makes things so much easier when you have this many options but due to how cramped this build is, I mean we've crammed in a lot of high-end components, we have the two 360 millimeter radiators which are jammed right up against each other in this corner. The only way that I could get to the top of the res from that front 360mm radiator was to go to this port over here. Which means we've blocked this top port. This is a quad port cap by the way. There's two ports on the top and there's two ports around the back. We can't use this port for filling. I mean unless we could somehow get to it from above but we can't. The other port behind over there, yeah we can't get to that. The only one we can get to is, is this one, and for this I've had to use two fittings, a 90 degree single rotary and a 90 degree dual rotary, and then I have this barb fitting which I'm going to connect the soft tube up to. Now, you can probably already see the problem. We've connected directly into the flow path. If we had have connected over here, it would have been perfect. We would have been outside of the flow path. If you connect into the flow path like this, what it means is if you open this to fill the loop while it's running, which is very common, I always fill loops while they're running. As the air starts to come out, I keep filling them. If you do that with this loop, it's going to come squirting out. It will go absolutely everywhere. So this loop can only be filled when it's not flowing, when the system is off. Not such a big sacrifice considering how clean this is and we, what we would have had to have done to get around this would just mean a huge amount of fittings and a lot of mess and yeah I did actually try another way initially but it was just too many fittings actually to get to this port over here so yeah the other thing is that we're obviously going to get a bit of fluid flowing down from here when we try to fill it but it's actually not so bad if I push this up it it locks the fluid in and it doesn't come out but you do have to be really really careful with the placement of your fill ports that's the moral to the story here and that is not an ideal placement but you need to consider do you want to look at something ugly for the next five years or do you want to have a loop that's a little bit harder to fill just the one time or maybe two times if you're lucky if, if you decide to well, if you're unlucky and you don't upgrade for longer. But anyway, let's get this loop filled. So I have my beloved laboratory grade distilled water here. I mean, you can use any distilled water. I'm just being, I guess, extra fussy and using distilled water that's, I mean, it's highly purified. It's used in surgery and dental work and things like that. Now the coolant is Mayhem's X1 Oil Black and a lot of people ask me which is the blackest. Now you would expect it to be the pastel, the opaque, because light won't shine through it. But interestingly that is not the case. It's actually the X1 transparent coolant that is more black. It's the most beautiful potent black. In the early days, the when it was first released, it actually wasn't as, as black, but I think Mayhem's has perfected it now, and I just absolutely love this coolant. The, the pastel is also really nice, but yeah, it's just not as black. It's, I guess, slightly grey or something. It's been a while since I've used it, but... Okay, so we're going to start filling. Now, the air has got nowhere to go except back out of the where we're filling it from which slows things down 
So I might actually open up another port somewhere to let some air out so that I can fill this a lot more quickly. So yeah, you can see that we already have an airlock, the air is trying to escape and it can't. I could get it to work, but it's just going to slow things down too much. So I'm going to open this other port over here, which is very difficult to get to. What we're using back here to power the pump is a Phobia external power supply. There's a whole bunch of brands that make these for powering hard drives externally and things like that. It's just a Molex. So this allows us to externally power the pump, which is extremely important. You don't want to use the power supply and, and hot wire it because you might have other things connected to it at that point in time. It's just really important to externally power. So yeah, grab something like this. Now what I do these days is actually run the pump directly into the power supply itself. And this often requires a six pin connector or whatever the power supply uses for peripherals. And then I give the customer a converter to run it from six pin back to something like this if they ever need to externally power it again. But just for the sake of moving things along a bit more quickly until we get to all of the cables later on, I've just temporarily hooked up a Molex for the pump and I'm about to plug it in and run this loop for the very first time. Here we go. It'd be nice to have a switch for this and I actually used to. So this is when you obviously need to have a quick check for leaks. If you can catch the leaks in the early stages now, before we get the loop full, it's really going to save us a lot of time and hassle. If it's your first time, then I'm afraid the chances of leaks are extremely high, so yeah, you need to be ready for it. So you can see there was a lot of backflow into the res, which is actually going to make filling this loop quite dangerous when it starts to get full. Because that backflow is going to come out of this fill port. So I've filled the reservoir again and we're ready to go. Now you'll notice that I did actually run the, the loop, the pump, with the fill port still open. but until it actually builds up pressure and is full, it's not going to come flowing out. This time it will get full circulation. So yeah, interestingly enough, it's creating a venturi effect. I thought it would come flying out, but it's actually just joining the rest of the flow and going right in. I mean, you can hear the noise. So this is why the internal flow tube inside of the reservoir is so important. You can see that right now, air is just being pushed back into the loop constantly and the air is never going to come out. But once we bring the flow, underneath the level of the coolant with that internal flow tube there's going to be no more air going back into the loop it also means it's going to be a lot quieter there's not going to be any trickling or air noise so that's it now it's going to start quieting down and now the air can start to come out but now we're not getting the venturi effect as much anymore so it's going to start to become more difficult to fill from this point onwards this is when this fill system kind of it's gone smoothly so far but getting in that last little bit now is not going to be easy at all. 
And now you're starting to see the benefits of having a well-placed fill port. So I've just opened this other port over here to let air out, but not all the way. I've just opened it a tiny bit so that we can just get a slight bit of air out. And now while the loop is running, I'm going to force cool it in under pressure. see that it is working quite well okay it's been a couple of hours now so most of the air has come out of the loop you can see there's still a little bit of lemonade stuck to the side of the reservoir there but that will take some serious time to come out probably a couple of days but the major air is out of the loop and I've been back and topped it up just once actually you can still just hear a little bit of air going in there But you can see it's full above the retention ring and that's another reason why we designed it this way so that you can well you can't see the the top of the reservoir where all of the bubbles and the mess is it is nicely cleaned up by that retention ring it hides it we don't have cooling up into that section on the right so i might have to top it up a little bit more by the time all of the air comes out it might actually get below the level of the retention ring so yeah that's about it you can see that with a well designed fill port this would be a lot easier the drain port there's only so far you can go with it they're handy but they're not going to just drain the entire loop as a lot of people would expect there's still you know a lot of work to be done but that's about it i hope you found this information useful thanks for watching and remember that none of this would be possible without our customers and our patrons